Welcome to Basic Go. Today we're going to study a joseki that starts with a 3-4 point in the corner. So we have seen before that this 3-4 point is good for territory and for attacking. So there are different places where white can approach. Um, in this case, the most common ones are A, B, and C and D. But we're going to start, uh, we're going to study the most common one, which is the approach at A. So white approaches at A. And there are different ways that black can respond. Uh, black may answer with a play like this. Black may pincer to attack. Or black may choose to take the corner. So even after white plays here, black can still enclose the corner and take the corner. So how would black do it? Just the same way as black would normally enclose this corner, black attaches here and plays here, doing a corner enclosure. Now, there are different ways that white can respond to this. Um, the most common one being, of course, A, to take the side. Or um, white could come to B also, which is for developing the top. Uh, but this is a very complex joseki. One of the three most complex josekis because it has lots and lots of var variations. Even professionals sometimes avoid them. There's a Japanese professional that would avoid this joseki all the time because it has so many variations that it tends to very complicated fights. So uh, normally, uh, white responds in either of these two points, but we're not going to study B, which is the avalanche joseki yet. So let's see how would... Um, be the Joseki proceed, white responding here. So with this move, white is saying, I want to take the side. Now, um, next move is quite obvious because if white doesn't respond, if black doesn't respond, I'm sorry, there's an Atari here, right? Uh, so black has to respond to this move. So black come back, comes back, um, preventing that Atari. And now white has a cut. This cut immediately would divide these two, these two uh, stones. Let's see what happens. If black gets to cut here, now, you know, white has two weak groups that are going to develop. So white has to protect this cutting point. In that moment, what happens is that white is going to connect either here with a tiger's mouth or uh, here, right? So at this moment, then next play is very important for black. And I have seen many people skipping this play in uh, this double dig digit Q and single digit Q. The, play, the most normal play is here. So this play, what this is doing is to preventing white from enclosing black. And white is going towards the top. Now there is uh, the possibility that these three stones could become attacked. So black has to, if black were to play something around, even around here, spoiling the tiger's mouth, that would put lots of pressure on, on white. So white has to extend to prevent such an attack. So white would do you know, something like this, extending here, all the way here um, to, this, to this stone. Now, if white were to connect here, then white couldn't, after this play, white couldn't extend all the way there because it's, it's a, a, a little bit too long. White would, explain, would just extend around here, okay? Some people actually play this. This is more towards center development, but the, the door is open here. This play is now kind of a pain in the butt for, for white. So usually the normal play is here. And even um, after white extended like this, um, black can still pressure white. Of course, providing that black has a stone here to support this pressure, because there is still a point remaining at A, right? And we're not going to go into that invasion yet, um, because they get a little bit complex. But um, yeah, we'll study that later. And it's exactly the same right here. When black has a stone here, black can still pressure um, white with this position because there is an invasion point. But now it's not here as before. It's actually here. 
spoiling Tiger's mouth. Just remember that. Why? Well, imagine that Black got to play here. Then this would be really difficult for Black because if, you know, I'm not going to go into this because these are, are a little bit uh, complex, but if White tries to, you know, disconnect Black, there are many, many ways like this or this or many different ways that Black can actually fight to disconnect this group, one weak, one weak, weak white group and then another weak white stone. So that's not very good. So if white tries to connect to this stone at any moment, let's say at any moment, um, white can just connect here. And black cannot prevent this connection because this, if white tries to prevent this connection, this is an Atari. So, you know, uh, black soul connected. So the most common way white response here to, to protect this is here. Like this, white is much more secure in the, you know, if, if black were to invade, white can actually fight now and capture this stone because of these stones, but we're not going to go into that right now. So let's see what happens when um, black, instead of playing here, plays something like this immediately. This is... Um, quite aggressive, uh, very aggressive style. If you play in Tygem, the server, the goal server, um, your opponent may play this quite often. But um, the hardest part is that there is no easy way to respond to this. I find this quite aggressive, um, almost greedy. Well, at least that's the way I see it. Of course, it doesn't, ha doesn't have to be like that. But um, the black saying, okay, I want the corner, but I also want the side. So I'm not going to leave you with anything. <laughs> so it's quite difficult. And what it leads is to a big fight. Um, because what's white, white's next move? Um, it's quite obvious that white has to play either this or this. Because if white doesn't play there, then black would immediately connect here. And again, I showed this doesn't work because of this Atari. White soul, uh, black soul connected. So white has to um, play one of these two moves. Um, and then what's going to happen is that a fight is going to develop here. If white plays something like this, you know, it would be white's turn to try to develop the top. Um, and maybe if uh, white plays here, this stone is not pressured so much and black takes this point. Now it's white, the one to, that has to attack this stone. So it's quite kind of complex. And the same goes for the other position. This position. If black were to play something like this, then white would immediately attach here. And, uh, you know, white can atari here, uh, sorry, play here, aiming at an atari. Next, this would be an atari. And to capture these two stones in a ladder, you know, so this doesn't work. So white, uh, black would have to immediately respond, connecting either here or here. Both of those points are good. And in this case, <clears throat> white would just simply extend here and then maybe do this. Although this could be okay if you're more comfortable with this. This is the Joseki move. And then this leads us with uh, black taking the corner but being kind of enclosed and black having an, a stone at side, but white taking more influence in the center. So it's kind of a tricky uh, thing to manage this is not I have played many games where my opponent played this way as black and I had to take the the center at the beginning I didn't feel comfortable because you know being a beginner I tended more towards the or even an intermediate I tended more as a, a, as a territorial style but now now I know this is perfectly possible many of those games where my opponent played like as black I won so this is completely playable Okay, this is it for today. I hope this Joseki is clear. Uh, we didn't see all the depth of the Joseki, of course. There are many more variations and invasion points, but we're going to go one step at a time, and later we're going to get to study those things. See you next time.